Hey, what's up, what's up? It's your girl, Whistle, and this is Best of the Best TV, where we keep our eyes open and our ears out all over for what's new to come today from some great producers, actors, comedians, artists, and more, showing a true hustle and a true grind on and off the streets. So listen, today we are sitting here with Milwaukee's very own, the man himself, Mr. Big Money. This man is out here doing his thing, topping the charts everywhere. We're gonna let him introduce himself. What's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing? What's up, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's your name? What's your name? Tell us your name. Much Lauren, you know. Everybody knows. Single Big Money. Do it for the blue. Do it for the blue. That's my song. That's my song. Everybody knows. Do it. Listen, Munch Lauren is known to get the clubs shaking. When they play his songs, all the girls hit the dance floor. I know y'all heard of uh, Do It For The Blue. That gets the girl dancing. Well, we're going to talk about Do It For The Blue. What made you do it for the blue? Uh, it's a funny story. I was uh, coming home from a club, from the club. I was just drinking Hennessy and stuff. You know? Ooh, there I, just, I had a studio like in my crib. The bass knocker. I just went to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I made the beat because I was making the beat. So I started. Did you made? Are you made the beat to do it for the blue? Yeah, I made the beat. Oh, so you produced too? Oh. So I sat there, made the beat, pushed out the song, recorded it. Did you ever think that it was going to be a challenge? Like they was going to make it to a whole challenge? Because challenges are big today. On YouTube and social media, and it's hard to kind of get somebody to catch on to your challenge. Did you think they was gonna ever make it to that? Yeah, it caught me by surprise a little bit. I knew it was gonna be real popular, but I didn't know it was going high, high win. Yeah, cause you even had like big celebrities doing it for the blue. <laughs> and like you're like, well, who's much more? Oh, he seems doing for the blue. I know um, Milwaukee had a um, expo, and it was for all the upcoming artists and stuff to try to um, see what they need and everything. And the first name that holler out was, hey, where's Mr. Big Money? Where's Mr. Big Money? How did that make you feel when somebody sees you like, oh, Big Money, Big Money? How does that make you feel? Yeah, it makes me feel great. It makes me feel like I'm, out, I'm doing something. You know, put me in a good mind state. So. so is it a difference between when adults um, say it to you or when the kids come up to you? Is it a different feeling? Yeah, it's, it's different because a lot of adults, they say they know the music because of their kids. So. Yeah, so you have the children fan base, you have the you have the fan base all around. What I wanna ask you is when you were in school, in high school, were you popular? Yeah, yeah. So you were popular already, were you doing music in school? I was doing the music but I wasn't popular for music in school until like my late senior year. Everybody used to hear my songs, but they didn't know it was me. I used to walk around like, like just living two shy lives kid. or something. Yeah. Were like, you shy? I wasn't shy, I was quiet. I'm just Quiet. Quiet. So, yeah. Quiet. Okay, we can ask you about these glasses you got on because everybody wants to know about the Munch Lauren glasses. Every Munch Lauren always have the circles. Wait, why is that your swag? That's your style? Yeah, yeah. I've been wearing circle shades since high school. <laughs> since high school. That's, we know. that's a piece of you. That's just that's, that's like a piece of you. Everybody said, what glasses at? Where's the glasses? It's that's a, a trademark. It's a trade. So when everybody start wearing it, then what? <laughs> you need a percentage. A percentage? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I was reading. Um, Journal Sentinel and Spotify. Now, Spotify, you're taking over. From my standpoint in Wisconsin, in the Milwaukee local, you are number one. As far as Journal Sentinel and Spotify, they have you as the top five most played songs in Wisconsin. Yeah. For Big Money, Do It For The Blue, and Dummy Ass Part Two. Now, you hit that chart three times. Yeah. Top five, and you hit the Three slots in that top five. Now, from where you started, how does that make you feel? Like, what do you have to say? Like, what goes through your head when you see those numbers? Like, wow. I know Big Money did a million on Spotify super fast. Like, and it just took off. And I know that Big Money on YouTube did like almost a million. It's like a 792.3K right now. Like close to 800K. Yeah, and you got over 2 million views altogether on YouTube as it is. So all these streams, all these views, all this. What would you tell an upcoming artist how to market and how to push to get up to that? Uh, get to that point where they can actually say, oh, I got those numbers, those big streams and stuff like that. I say just, you know, you know it takes money to make money. So, you know, if you put money behind your songs and music, it they get your songs to these markets and all that. And also, just stay consistent. Just stay consistent all the way. Just keep pushing yourself. Don't give up. You know, if you see like, I know a lot of people there, they see like they only get like a thousand or less in a week, and after that they give up on the song. Don't 
keep pushing. I've been pushing. A thousand with like views or streams? Like a thousand views or a hundred views and then they give up like after a week or so. Okay, so were like were you pushing it to like family members or just everybody or friends? Or? I was I was pushing it to everybody. I was anybody that was telling me like they got blog placements, I was paying them to put it on there. I was just doing every little thing I can and they finally it, just caught me. This, I'm glad that you said it takes money to make money because with the streaming views now Takes offense. Do you buy views? Have you ever bought views before? No, I never bought. What is your um, opinion on people that do buy views and try to cheat their way through the game? It's pointless. It's pointless. Like when it comes to like doing shows, like fake views not gonna come to your shows. Exactly. Performing in front of zero people. Fake views don't count. Yeah, exactly. Like, so for like Instagram, like how's your Instagram like? How's the girls with the Instagram? So the Instagram is getting bigger than Facebook today. Yeah, it's getting a bigger platform. It's, it's going crazy. I just, uh, probably like in the last year or so, I started focusing more on Instagram. It's been going crazy. The numbers been picking up. So are your fan bases the more of the women or the men? More women. More women. So when you create dance music, because I know Dummy Ass Part 2 is like one of the female's favorite songs. I actually watched the, um, Make Another Video and you went live and you were uh, casting for the girls and everything. I want to ask you, like, how was that experience? Like, trying to find the right girls to go in that video, because that's a big song. Yeah, yeah. And we, everyone loved, like, to listen to dance to it. How did you go about choosing the ones to actually perform in that video? Well, really, we just, we just had fun. So, you know, if you, if you had a dummy ass and you want to have fun, you was there. <laughs> it was a lot of dummy ass. Yeah, <laughs> it was a exactly. lot of girls in there. Um, so and yes, y'all go check that out. Uh, Dummy Ass Part Two, that is the song. Do it for the blue, big money. Y'all already know that's number one. I want to ask you, um, who influenced you most to start your music, the rap like, music? Um, like locally or? It can be locally, big. I mean, you don't have to always be a celebrity to influence someone. So it really, can be really, my family influenced me. I have to say that my family, they like, I had like a musical family, like that. You know, you walk in my grandma's house, you hear music playing 24-7. You walk in my mama's house, you hear music playing. You know, I go up to where my dad work at, he playing music all day. You know, it's been like that since I've been growing up. My, uh, my uncle, he started off rapping when I was younger. He was rapping a lot, you know, recording himself. That's what got me into rapping. You know, I seen him doing I seen him getting girls from it, so. <laughs> the girls. <laughs> yeah, so I, I hopped on it, so. Okay, so then with your parents, do um, your parents are, are they a big part of your support system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 like, do they well, be like, oh my baby, is this somebody gonna get them or stuff like no, that? No, they they support my my mama. Kind of be like, sometimes she be tripping because you know it be you know, a lot of like the ass and what I'm saying. She, <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah, but I be like, you know, you listen to too short, you listen to all that. You know? Have they ever have you ever caught your parents uh, singing your lyrics before? I, a, uh, I brought them to my mama to one of my shows and she was singing all the lyrics. Yeah. Maybe happy. I thought she didn't know the marriage. She was just Yeah, she did. That, that's, that's one thing to love and the support from the family members. She did a lot of that today. You can see, you get a lot of support from strangers and people that you never even knew of more as close family. So that's a good thing that you do have that support from them or whatever. And about this new album that you have out, Much Lauren, see, you make a lot of, um, I want to say, club music. You get the club. Like, I, it's cool. So what can we expect from this new album? Can we expect some more serious music? Or is it just club, the club is in you? Or can we just, are we gonna expect anything from you soon that's telling the story of Munch Lauren, like deep side? Uh, it's, it's mostly Munch Lauren. It's like how, how I started off, so I started with club music. Well, when I started off, I was in high school, so I was in the club, so it was party, like house party music, all that stuff. So this, uh, this project, just me, me going in the studio, you know, listening to beats and expressing like, however I feel at the moment. I was just making them songs like that. Okay, and so with the um, recording, because you mentioned studio, featuring. So when you do the features and someone, okay, say someone inquires you for a feature, you listen to the track, it's all right, it's okay, but it's not you. It be garbage. Have to be garbage necessarily, but it's not you. How do you go about responding to those artists that ask you for those features that you just can't get jiggy with? <laughs> How do you uh, go about answering yeah. that? The paper writing, I still do it. I try to uh, bring, I try to like bring the best out of them. Like I 
try to get up some suggestions like that. Maybe you should switch this up. This, this the best I can do. And then I just add my, my sauce As far to as it. turning them down, it's yeah. all about the money. See, much more is really about the money, <laughs> not the money. So big money, okay, as you said, do it for the blue was the um, freestyle. Yeah. And then you did the beat and all of that. Big money, how did that come up? Because you got people talking about cars, and you got every, I mean, you even got broke people talking about big money. <laughs> and they sing it like, you make people feel rich with that song. Like they got $5 in their hand, they got this big money. Even a little kid, a quarter, this is big money. That song took off bananas. Yeah. What made you even think about big money? Like, where did the big come from? Where did the money come from? Those uh, two words. Originally, the song, uh, I wrote the song. It was like kind of like a tribute to my friend Sam that I get a shout out to in the song. He used to always call me Big Money Munch every time he see me. Oh, Big Money, got the, the new car, got the bands, Big Money Munch. Like, when he died, uh, I was trying to, I was working on a project, a car project, yeah, and I was trying to think of something tribute him but at the same time he was like one of my biggest supporters so I to think of I didn't want to make no no sad song no RP and all that. I mean, the songs that he liked it. He liked it those club bangers. That's something he cried tribute. to. So I just made the big money. Okay, so he just a piece of him and a piece of you. Yeah. Exactly. Big and the money, okay. Well rest in peace to your friend. He's tumble. So with the um Back to the featuring thing, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I know I have a song with you, but a lot of other people have songs with you. Is there anybody that you want to work with? Uh, I work with anybody and everybody. Like anybody, that, no, just like one person in particular that you're like, oh, like that's already in the game. Like, you're like oh, I would love to be going with this person. Just have a feature from that person. It's a lot of people, I say, like, at this moment right now, if they tell me, like, I can pick anybody to make a song with. Like Drake. Drake? Yeah, at the top, so. And that's on the big scale. Okay, so yeah. how about locally? Locally. Uh, in your city. Let's put in your city. Who would you like to work with that you haven't worked with yet? In your city. I always wanted to do a song with a uh, Go Off Odon. So he stopped rapping. He was like one of the rappers that I watched. When I was like going to parties, he was always at the parties like doing what I was doing. And kind of like somebody I was watching in. So. I tried, I reached out to him a couple times, but he said he done. I'm like, was he retired? Yeah, he don't want to rap no more. Okay. <laughs> so do you see yourself retired? Well, I don't see you retiring no time soon. So can we expect more club bangers from you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a, uh, a new single coming out December 21st called Pink Lemonade featuring uh, Jane Doe. Oh, so, Jane Doe. Oh, yeah. Pink Lemonade, and what's, what's this about this album? Ooh, it's the Eagle. So it's like I was just describing they see like, you know, I'm in the street club, you know, the sweet way. Pink lemonade. <laughs> describing it. So is it for the strippers? Yeah, or is it for the club it's, period? It's for the club period, but that's what that's what I was pertaining to the strippers. But that's good though because nowadays to get your music out there and to get it heard for they say the best people to give it to is the strippers. Yeah, exactly. To give it to those DJs and stuff like that. And then I wanna ask you a uh, comment on that with or do you remember the first DJ that ever mixed your song it up? Uh, I don't remember the first. I can tell you the first DJ that always played, no matter what show, I always played the music. DJ Booba, no matter where I was at, he was playing it. He actually was a, he was a big part of breaking big money too. You know what I'm saying? At his party, he played the show. And he had called me like, pull up, lunch. I'll pull up. He had tried to force me to Big Money is performing. Big, yeah, Big Money was brand new. And I'm like, they don't know that song. So no one calls you by, we're not going to say government name on here. So everybody now is going to call you Munch Lauren. <laughs> everybody, have an elderly person ever came up to you like, oh, you're Munch Lauren. <laughs> like someone, like elderly, elderly, like old church people and stuff if like they, that. If they with their kids, their kids are saying, and they be like, oh, you the, you the Munch Lauren guy, huh? Big Money guy. And they saying stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Did you get those um, females? I know the females is like a big part of your fan base. Did you get those females that try to get the kids? Like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Have that's you it. ever came across that before? Yeah, a lot. A lot. I'll be hearing them say, like, I just act like I'm here and I wait for them to come up to me. You know what I'm saying? That a lot. Okay, so uh, social media. Let's get on that topic real quick. Social media. Um, there's a lot of beef. 
music, about the music industry locally in Milwaukee alone. It's a lot of beef going around today about the music and who's the best and who's the worst and who grinding the hardest and who taking over put the city on and stuff like that. What is your definition of putting the city on? Put the city on is somebody that position that's putting the city on. Okay, do you see a lot of that going around today or do you just see that uh, people just say they put the city on or are you saying that's the actual hustle and the grind that put the city on? I mean, somebody want to put the city on, we all to be straight right now. So how do you stay away from social media people? How do you stay away from getting into it? And other people, they tag you with it, oh, much more garbage, much more, that album suck, or he ain't what he say about, or he can't perform, or stuff like that, the negative stuff. Just, how do you uh, deal with that on social media? Just let them talk. A lot of artists, they tend to, if they get to them, and the first thing they put, I quit. I don't want to do it no more. Or y'all not going to deserve this fight or That's take it to the yeah. guns or the streets and stuff like that was not that serious. What do you do to keep your mind off of all the negativity that comes with the music? Uh, I just ignore everything. I find, I'm, I'm, I got a sense of humor, so I just, even though when stuff ain't funny, I still be laughing at it. Like, it's all funny. So do you, have, do you have cocky days? Sometimes, but you know, I, ain't, I ain't a cocky, cocky person, but... Yeah, we can see because you're doing those numbers, like I said, and you just sitting here, you just chilling like it's not nothing. And I said, like, like over millions. Yeah. Like, and um, that's big kudos to you, over appreciate millions. It, appreciate it. And your YouTube subscribers is bananas, 15.5K. Your Spotify is almost at 6,000. Um, the followers alone, not listeners, followers. And that's a hard thing to do. To get, to get those followers on Spotify. That is very hard. So for you to have that much, that is a big, big thing. And so I want you to tell everybody about this new album that's coming up and when is it coming out and what can we expect from this before we wrap this up because I want them to know when it's coming. Uh, the new album, I ain't, I ain't got no date on there, nothing yet. So uh, the new single, you know, Pink Lemonade, is going to be on there. Uh, we, we focus on the Pushing that, get that out here. And then once that get the moving and grooving, I'll probably hit for the album, new album. And it's Pink Lemonade, so y'all be on the lookout for Pink, Pink Lemonade, Lemonade featuring like, Jane Doe. You can, yeah, you can uh, pre-order right now. It's, it's available for pre-ordering. On where? Spotify? Uh, iTunes. iTunes. Yeah. Okay, so Pink Lemonade is available for pre-order. If you want to get it first, get it first. So is it a sneak peek on there? Uh, a snippet? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a little thirty second. 30, uh, 30 second snippet on iTunes. So y'all heard it from them. Pink Lemonade featuring Jane Doe. Go check that out. Um, what's your um Twitter and your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram, 414 Much Lauren. Twitter, same thing. Uh, everything else is Much Lauren. And then the fan page and all of that's Much Lauren. Yeah, stuff everything. Like that. Yeah. And then if a person wanted to book you or contact you, how will they go about that? Uh, they can email Gene Team Bookings at Gmail if they want to book or catch a feature. Now, is Much Lauren his own manager, or does, does Much Lauren have a manager? No, I have a manager. Uh, he, uh, Charlie Pierre Gang Entertainment. That's my management. Is it the, um, are you signed to a label, or are you independent, or are you, are you no, looking I'm, to sign? Or are you I'm under, right I'm independent, I'm uh, under my own label, Guy Rich. Uh, just management. And you gonna stay independent? Or hopefully sign, or are you gonna stay independent for the moment? Well, for the most part. I think that's the smart way. Yeah, smart. <laughs> so, um, everything Spotify, Deezer, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, Tidal, everything yeah. you're on, right? Yeah, um, Project X is on all those social media, all those digital social media sites. You can go download, stream, share, like, tag, do whatever support you can. City. He is really doing his thing in this city. This is the person that show you you don't need the big billboards and all that stuff to make money. You have to show it to make it. And you can that you've been doing that. And you've been making it from behind the scenes and all the things. A lot of performances and concerts. A lot of people want to open up for you. How does that make you feel? To where you like, oh, I wish I could open up for Drake. And maybe people are like, I'm gonna open up for much Lauren. Oh, I want you to open that. Do you feel yeah. like we're like, dang, okay. How do you yeah. feel when they wanna do that? Make me feel good. That goes back to the, uh, what you were saying about putting on. I, I try to like artists like that. I 
try to put them on the platform because I know like, you know, my platform might be bigger than theirs. I try to always reach out to them and help them out because, you know, if I was in, if, if the shoe was on the other foot, you know, I'd be wanting that too for my person that's up there to help me out. So I try my best to reach out as many people uh, as I can and bring them on that platform. Okay, so is there an age limit, an age limit, or do you try to help the children? I like the little ones that want to rap and stuff like that. Oh my God! It's like, could you see yourself doing the feature with like, with like a little twelve-year-old boy or something like that? Yeah, child? I, uh, I did a few features like that, younger kids, or like when I do like the Sweet Sixteen, they be coming up to me like, listen to this rap. I, I listen to so it. So you listen you know? instead yeah, of. Yeah, I just tell them. You know, I, I keep it, you know, honest with them. I don't, you know, it ain't what you say; it's how you say it. So. Okay, my last question is a good question. I've heard, this is what I'm gonna ask you. What is your response to people who always say, hey, put me on? What's your response to those three words, put me on? What do you feel about those three words? That is the first thing I say is, you know, you gotta put yourself on. I can't, you know, I'm not the person that can put you on, you gotta put yourself on. If you can't put yourself on, nobody else can put you on. And who, um, look, who um, produced Big Money? Uh, the real ride out. Okay. Yeah, we produce a lot of hits from here too. So. so y'all, this is best of the best TV. I am your girl Whistle. Again, we are sitting here with Milwaukee's very own top of the charts, Munch Lauren. We have found out some great information about him today. We're gonna let him give y'all his social media information and that new album, Munch Lauren, will be out soon. The new single, Pink Lemonade, will be out soon. The snippet is on iTunes. You can go check that out, pre-order it. Two Day featuring Jane Doe. We're gonna let him give us his social media um, site so you can look him up. Okay, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, 414 Munch Lauren. Uh, Facebook, Snapchat, all that is much longer. Shut up the hustle. Ooh, there's an eagle. It wants to bathe me.